1984 by George Orwell. Hopefully you've read it. It's a classic. You may have seen the movie with John Hurt that came out in 1984 itself. This is the Blu-ray from Criterion. I'm on it. You may even have seen the TV production that the BBC made 30 years earlier with Peter Cushing. That's a classic as well. But have you heard about the very first Orwell adaptation, the one from America, 1953? I'm David Ryan. I'm author of this book. And I'm here to tell you about Studio One. So the book came out in June of 1949. It had been finished in 48, and some people say that Orwell just swapped the last two digits of the year around, 48, 84, whatever. Uh, it's a classic dystopian novel about a low-level drone called Winston Smith. He lives in a totalitarian society, and he rewrites the news for a living. Prediction in Big Brother's speech of previous day wrongly reported. Figures given by Big Brother would, as always, be correct. Winston starts having rebellious thoughts, which he writes in his diary. He has an affair with a much younger worker. They keep meeting up in a room above a junk shop, and eventually they are caught and tortured until they go along with the party line. They are brainwashed, basically. So within about 10 or 11 weeks of the book coming out, NBC University Theatre in America produced a radio adaptation starring David Niven as Winston. Um, he's a bit posh in it, actually. You can turn it off. Yes, Winston. We have that privilege. In April of 1953, NBC had another go, this time with Richard Widmark in the lead role, who was rather American. Would you believe that until this moment I never knew what colour your eyes were? They're brown. And the lashes are thick and dark. How old are you? 26. By this point, Orwell was dead. He died in hospital in January 1950. And although he went to his grave saying he was a democratic socialist, he'd gained quite a following in America by this point because uh, he was anti-Stalin. He was anti-totalitarianism. And he didn't like the way that the Soviet Union had turned out, put it that way. Now, in those days, a lot of American TV drama came in the form of sponsored anthology series, and one of these was CBS's Studio One, sponsored by the electrical company Westinghouse, and broadcast live from New York. So to launch its sixth season on the 21st of September 1953, the new producer, Felix Jackson, decided to adapt 1984, and it was a huge production. It was the biggest thing American TV had ever seen. Why did he choose this book in particular? Well, it could have been Stalin's death earlier that year. It could have been the Richard Widmark radio production. Or it could have been his own experience as a Jewish refugee from Nazi Germany. We just don't know. A Scottish playwright called William Templeton wrote the script. And it was directed by Paul Nickell, who cast as Winston Smith, Eddie Albert, an actor who was already a veteran of TV because he'd been in the very first American teleplay in 1936. Albert makes an interesting choice. He plays Winston as a dweeb, as a sad man who falls in love or falls in lust with this younger woman, Julia, played by Norma Crane. And after he meets her in the countryside for the first time and is quite passionate for 1953 TV, he finds the strength to rebel against the party, as personified by the third main member of the cast, O'Brien, the inner party bigwig played by Lorne Green. Green would go on to become famous in the Western show Bonanza, where he was the kindly patriarch Ben Cartwright. But here he is the villain of the piece. He pretends to be Winston and Julia's friend, and then he ends up entrapping the two of them, and torturing Winston. There's one scene, actually, where he invites Winston over to his apartment and looks like he's making a pass at him. You seem to me a valuable man. I'd like to talk to you sometime. Here is my address. 
I'm usually at home in the evenings. There are a lot of interesting things to note about this play. It was made during the era of McCarthyism and the anti-communist blacklist, but you can't really pinpoint an editorial stance for or against anti-communism. You can take it either way, a bit like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. The posters of Big Brother, the symbol of the party, are just weird. I mean, normally he looks like Stalin or a kind of Hitler-Stalin composite or something like that. Here it looks like something that Mad Magazine has commissioned from Picasso. It's just bizarre. Martin Landau, the future Oscar-winning actor, is in it. He doesn't have any lines, he's an extra. <laughs> But the main thing you notice now is that it's a very bare bones adaptation. It's only 50 minutes long without commercials. And so a lot of the meat of the book isn't there, particularly all the stuff about the manipulation of language and new speak and all these fascinating themes that Orwell came up with. Nope, it's just story, story, story. Also the climactic scene in room 101 where Winston is confronted with his worst fear, rats, which will break him. Well, you don't actually see any rats. You just hear them squeaking, and it's a bit comical. Will you lead the way, oh, oh. or shall I? To say though I like the play considering all the limitations it gets the story over very effectively and it was a big hit in its day and the only person who didn't seem to like it was the director Paul Nichols neighbor I think 1984 was my most important show I think it had something to say that people should be listening at and I know my next door neighbor in Bronxville would not speak to me for about three weeks. She said she'd never been so depressed in her life. She and her husband had just returned from South America and said, Paul, it's exactly the way it is down there. Mm. And I understand the sponsor's wife was very upset with the program. And Felix received a call from the sponsor the next day mm. saying his wife could not sleep last night. I said, good. That's marvelous. Exactly what it should have been. Yeah. Anyway, that's the story of the first Orwell screen adaptation. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.